Hello and welcome to Attachment Lesson 4. In this video we are going to be looking at animal studies. Psychologists have been interested in the early bonds between non-human parents and their offspring for quite some time, because attachment-like behaviour appears to be common to a range of species, and so research is conducted in the hope that understanding this behaviour may actually be able to help psychologists understand mother-infant attachments in humans. There are two animal studies that you need to know for A-level psychology, and those are the two that we are going to cover in this video. First you've got the work of Conrad Lorenz from 1935, and then you've got the work of Harry Harlow in 1958. So we're going to start with Lorenz. This is him, and he was one of the most prominent ethologists in the early 20th century. He conducted animal studies using geese in order to investigate the relationship between infant animals and their mothers. The procedure that Lorenz used was very, very simple. He got a clutch of goose eggs and randomly divided them into two groups. One group was left with their mother so that when they hatched she was the first things the new goslings saw, and the second group were placed in an incubator so that when they hatched Lorenz was the first things that they saw. After they hatched, Lorenz found that the incubator group followed him wherever he went, whereas the control group followed the mother wherever she went. Even after mixing the two groups up, they still managed to divide themselves back up again into control group and incubator group, and then proceeded to follow either Lorenz or the mother. Lorenz concluded that the incubator group had imprinted on him. And imprinting is a process by which birds attach to and follow the first moving object that they see after hatching. For all intents and purposes, Lorenz had become the mother goose for the incubator group. Lorenz also suggested that there is a critical period in which imprinting must take place. A critical period is a time frame in which imprinting has to happen or it won't happen at all and that critical period could be as little as a few hours. Lorenz later also investigated the relationship between imprinting and adult mate preferences, and he found that when an animal imprinted, it would often lead to courtship behaviour later being displayed. And an example of that was reported by Lorenz, where he talked about an orphaned peacock who was reared in a reptile house at the zoo. The peacock ended up imprinting on a giant tortoise, which then later resulted in the peacock showing courtship behaviour towards giant tortoises. And that is known as sexual imprinting. Our second study is Harlow's Monkeys from 1958. This is possibly one of the most well-known animal studies, often for all the wrong reasons, but it's definitely one of the most important animal studies in terms of informing our understanding of attachment and also the nature of love, which is something that Harlow was particularly interested in. In his research, Harlow removed 16 baby rhesus monkeys from their mothers and reared them with two surrogate mothers. One of these mothers was made entirely of wire, whilst the other surrogate mother was also made of wire but covered in a soft cloth material and was heated with a hot water bottle. And you can see the two different mothers on the screen now. His research had two conditions. In one condition, the wire mother dispensed milk, and in the other condition, the cloth mother dispensed milk. And the researchers were interested in how long the babies would spend with each of the mothers and how they would behave towards them. And Harlow found that the baby monkeys spent most of their time with the soft cloth covered mother, often up to 19 or 20 hours a day, regardless of where the milk was coming from. In the condition where the wire mother dispensed the milk, the baby would actually cling on to the cloth covered mother and reach over to get food from the wire mother, again like you can see in the picture. It was also found that the baby monkeys would seek comfort from the cloth mother, for example, when they were frightened. As you can see in the picture, the baby is sitting with the cloth mother because a doll has been introduced to the cage, which is a frightening and new experience for the baby monkey. And so the baby monkey goes to the cloth mother for reassurance, for confidence, and also for protection. 
One final finding was that monkeys who had been deprived of a mother suffered severe consequences in the long term, particularly those who were reared with a wire mother alone. Harlow found that these monkeys grew up to be less sociable, more aggressive, and less skilled at mating. When they did mate and get pregnant, they very often neglected, attacked, and sometimes even killed their own young. Interestingly, if the motherless monkeys spent time with other monkeys, they seemed to be able to recover from the impact of their early experiences, but only if that happened before they were three months old. Monkeys who spent six months or more with their wire mothers without spending any time with other monkeys were unable to recover from that experience. So from that research, Harlow concluded that baby monkeys appear to have an innate drive to seek contact comfort from their parents. That suggests that attachment is formed through an emotional need for security rather than through food, which is what the behaviorist approach had suggested previously, and it's something that we're going to look at in the next attachment lesson. So from Harlow's research, it can be concluded that creature comfort is vital not only for attachment, but also for healthy social development. For example, socializing with others, knowing what appropriate behaviors are, parenting, and so on. Okay, so those were your two animal studies. We're now going to move on to a couple of evaluation points, and then we'll finish off with a quick six mark outline. So first off, let's have a look at a strength for Lorenz's research. This is only a brief one, but there is research support for the existence of imprinting. Researchers in 1995 exposed chicks to simple shape combinations that moved, like a triangle, a rectangle in front, and then when the chicks were exposed to a range of combinations, they followed the original one most closely. So that supports the idea that young animals are born with this innate mechanism to imprint on a moving object that is present in the critical window of development. Okay, so it's only a short one, but it is a little bit of research support for this idea of imprinting. However, a downside of Lorenz's research is that it doesn't really have great generalizability to humans. Lorenz only studied non-human animals, and on top of that, they were birds. Okay, so it's difficult to assume that humans would act in the same way, especially because attachment formation in mammals is very different to attachment formation in birds, specifically because mammal mothers tend to show more emotional reactions to their offspring, and also the critical period is much bigger as well. So whilst some of Lorenz's findings have influenced our understanding of development and attachment, the results and conclusions can't necessarily be generalized to a human population because birds and humans function very differently. Moving on, we have a strength of Harlow's research, and that is that it has real-world application. For example, the knowledge gained from Harlow's research has helped social workers and clinical psychologists understand that a lack of bonding experience could be a risk factor in child development which can then allow people to intervene and prevent poor outcomes. On top of that, the research has educated us in the care of captive wild monkeys in zoos and breeding programs. So we now know that monkeys need an adequate attachment figure as part of their care in order to ensure that they develop healthily. So that means that the value of Harlow's research isn't just theoretical, but it can actually be used in a practical sense in the real world. And then as a final limitation, we have the issue of ethics and animal studies. Okay, so this is a different animal studies evaluation point. The Lorenz evaluation point was all about generalizability, whereas this one is more about ethics. Now, the thing to bear in mind is that Animal studies in many ways are very, very practical and are good as well. You know, there's not very many demand characteristics and investigator effects and all of that stuff, which is great. Also, animals breed very quickly, which means that you can, over a very short period of time, have many generations of animals, which means that you can keep an eye on development and have a look at how behavior changes over time. However, that being said, the animals in Harlow's research 
suffered greatly in terms of emotional separation from their biological mother at a very, very early age due to the procedure that Harlow used. The issue is that if primates are considered to be sufficiently human-like to generalize the results to humans, then logically the effects of the psychological harm that the monkeys are enduring should be similar to what a human baby would experience. So given that fact, protection from harm is a massive ethical issue in research such as Harlow's monkeys. The primates weren't looked after, the primates endured massive emotional distress, and for a lot of them, those consequences were irreversible. So the question is, was the insight that was gained from the research important enough to justify the procedure that Harlow used in his approach? That is a question that all psychologists have to ask themselves when they're doing this kind of research, and it is a question that has to be asked of Harlow's as well. Okay, so those are your four evaluation points. Now, just to finish off, I am going to give you an example outline for a six mark question on outline animal studies in attachment. So if this is your question, then I'm going to go ahead and assume that you would want to talk about both Harlow and Lorenz in your answer. And so that is what I am going to do in mine. Now, there is a massive amount of information that you could technically include in your outline. So this outline is going to be one of those ones where you have to decide which bits of information are important and which bits you're going to leave out. As usual, I would recommend that you start with a little bit of an introduction sentence, even if it's just a small one, because it sets the scene and it just makes for nicer reading. I would then go on to talk about Lorenz. I would spend a little bit of time talking about the procedure and then move on to the findings. You'll notice I haven't talked about a critical period and I also haven't talked about sexual imprinting. My thinking is there is enough other stuff to talk about to kind of give a general idea of what Lorenz did and to also give enough detail. I've talked about imprinting. I've talked about the fact that one group was hatched in an incubator and so on. And I've defined imprinting as well. So I think that is enough of the keywords and key definitions. I then move on to Harlow. Again, same kind of deal. I do the procedure first and then I move on to the findings. Again, I leave out the findings about maternal deprivation because there's enough other stuff to talk about. I spent a little bit of time talking about the surrogate mothers and what the difference was between the two. I gave two findings. They preferred to spend more time on the cloth mother and also they sought comfort from the cloth mother when they were frightened. Yes, there is more to talk about, but equally, we only have a limited amount of time to actually get this written, and so you've got to make a choice as to what you want to include and what you don't want to include. I then finish off with a little bit of a conclusion from Harlow's research, and that is that attachment with parents is formed through an emotional need for security rather than through the receiving of food. Again, there are more conclusions that you could draw, but one conclusion will be enough for this six mark outline. Okay, and that is the end of the video. So I hope it's made sense and I hope it's been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one.